Okay, they just messaged me to say that the bus is there and I still haven't left my room, so let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, oh. Ew. I'm that friend that's always late. Oh. Damn it. Oh, come on. Well, I'm just gonna have to run out. Bye, room. See you whenever. Is that everything? I think so. The reason I'm so stressed out is because I'm about to embark on possibly the toughest journey of my life. So after that unfortunate self-inflicted delay, we did manage to arrive at the airport on time. We have finally made it to the airport and now we're just anxiously waiting around here at the gate for the plane. There is no set departure time. Apparently the captain will come at some point and will be like, hey, it's go time, let's do it. That's apparently how it works. I mean, I don't know. This is not like your standard flight. Definitely not your standard trip either. I'm about to fly from the southern tip of Chile to Antarctica, where I will be attempting to climb the ice continent's tallest mountain, Mount Vincent. And I won't be alone. And here is our team. Here is everybody. <laughs> so these are the team members that will be hopefully hopefully climbing Vincent. Oh yeah, one more cool thing that I want to show you. Check this out. I've never seen this before. This is not your most standard airport code, UGL. That means Union Glacier, Antarctica. Most of the people here are headed in the same direction. Tell me you're going to climb a mountain without telling me you're going to climb a mountain. Oh yeah, I feel significantly underdressed right now in these like little <laughs> winter hiking trousers. Some people here are already wearing their proper Antarctic gear. Look at these jackets. This is exactly the kind of stuff that you'll need at the top of the mountain because it gets cold out there. to Antarctica this is pretty rad <laughs> check this out all this stuff around here this is all luggage headed to Antarctica I think the passenger section is up front there you go now the reason why you gotta sanitize your shoes is because the environment in Antarctica is super sensitive so you don't want to bring in any like basically foreign things um, <laughs> Hi, how are you? You don't want to contaminate the environment essentially and that's why you gotta be really really careful and that's why they insist on cleaning your shoes. Isn't that right Kirsten? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Alright, let's grab a... I'm not gonna grab the big seats, I'm just gonna grab this seat right here. I still couldn't believe we were flying to Antarctica on this plane. It all just seemed too ordinary. All right, we're just about to take off, which is incredibly exciting. This is just like a normal Boeing 757, which is kind of crazy to think about. And it's operated by Iceland Air. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's the case. Anyway, I've got a whole row to myself, but I guess so does everybody else on this flight because there's not that many people. Everybody on board is going to Union Glacier, but not everybody is climbing Vincent. Some people are just employees of the logistics company that runs the base camp there. Anyway, this flight is supposed to take just over three hours and I guess we're about to take off now, so I better go.
to the Union Glacier. Uh, please remain seated with your seatbelts. Antarctica. I can't get over this. First impressions of Antarctica. Well, it's fucking freezing. <laughs> it's really cold. But it's not even the temperature. It's just the wind that has this like biting quality to it. So it's proper freezing. And also it's slippery. I mean, this, this you guys, this is like million year old ice that we're walking on, which is unbelievable. So I'm just wildly excited. I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm here. This is like the most surreal moment of my life. So just behind me is the blue ice runway. This is no ordinary runway. It's pure ice, pure ice. Millions of years old. I can't believe we landed here. It is so damn slippery out here. How on earth did this plane land here? Please someone explain it to me. At this point, all I kept thinking was, are we on Mars? This place just seems to live by its own rules. Those are the monster trucks that will take us to the base camp. <laughs> the coolest airport shuttle I've ever seen in my life. This is probably the most unusual piece of cargo that Antarctica has seen, or certainly one of. We brought 60 eggs. What are they for exactly? For food. We're gonna eat those. We are gonna eat them? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. But they made it. They made it unscathed. It's gonna be a beautiful breakfast. <laughs> My 4x4 <laughs> but this is what you need to drive on ice like this and in such extreme conditions all right we're ready to go let's uh let's drive to camp <laughs> The monster truck and our driver Phil tells us that it's about eight kilometers, 10 minutes to the camp, pretty much in a straight line. I mean, I guess that would make sense, right? Now there's not that, that many turns here, not many trees to avoid, nothing but just the mountains. Also, I'm really, really excited to see that this monster truck that drives around in Antarctica has the same diesel heater that I do in my car. Obviously mine is a little bit smaller. <laughs> All right, it looks like we are about to arrive at camp. And I'm just going to give you a quick tour of the camp and then leave you uh, where the food is uh, and I'll tell you what's going to happen next after this. First thing to know about this is that we're on a glacier so there's many hundreds of meters of ice below us and around us there are crevasses. So the camp area is safe and it's marked by flags. So please for now, don't go outside that area. Stay in here and you'll be safe from crevasses. There's a lot of really, really interesting people here at Union Glacier Camp, trust me. These guys are some of them. All right, let's find out what they have just done. Hello, this is Tashi. He's my brother Mingma and he's my yeah, brother Dawa. Dawa. And Dawa and Mingma, they're the first sibling who done all the 14 mountains above 8,000 meters. And Mingma is the first Southeast Asian who done all the 14 and Dawa is the second. And myself, I'm a climber. I've done like 53 Himalayan expeditions. And I'm the youngest person to climb Everest without supplementary oxygen in the age of 19. I still can't quite believe that I made it here to one of the wildest, most remote, most desolate places in the world. There, is, there are no animals here, just penguins on the coast, but the coast is very far away. There is no plants, no vegetation, nothing. It's just us. This small, tiny camp and a nothingness 
for hundreds of miles all around in every single direction. <laughs> Can you imagine? Anyway, it's about minus 12 degrees, so it's not too cold. There's a bit of a wind, and this is probably the lowest that the sun will set tonight. <laughs> 24 hours of sunlight in Antarctic summer. We had a bit of time to kill before our next flight, so someone set up a net and, well, we played the world's most remote game of volleyball. There you go. Yes! <laughs> anyway, it's time to go. one of these tiny little planes which will take us to the base camp of Mount Vincent, the tallest peak on the icy continent and this is wildly exciting. We're on the very last plane out. We've been watching them go all morning with other climbers. <laughs> it's called skis. The plane is wearing skis. I've never seen them before. Oh my god, it's gonna be wild. Oh yeah? All right, let's go. Oh my god, it's so tiny. <laughs> this is amazing. There's two emergency exits. Uh, this back door here, the handle goes up, the door goes out. This handle goes down, the door goes out. Fire extinguisher and uh, on the rear right door, another fire extinguisher on the front, under the front right seat. First aid kits on the rear door here. Camping survival gear is in the tail as well as the emergency locator. Do you expect that we'll have to go and survive in the wilderness? I'm praying not, let's <laughs> This short flight will take us from the Cushy Union Glacier to the foot of Antarctica's tallest mountain. is only the beginning. Here's what happens next. Oh, we'll pile our duffel bags onto sleds and then we'll drag them over to camp and get ready to move to low camp. All right, well, Vincent Base Camp is just over there. It's really, really close. How about low camp? Whereabouts is that? Up the valley. You can see our the trail we take, walk underneath that big ice fall, and it's just over that ridge. How many kilometers? Uh, it's about a little less than 10K. It's about yeah. five and a half miles. Amazing. In the upcoming videos, I'll be showing you what it's like to live in pretty extreme conditions at a mountain base camp in Antarctica. And after that, well, we're going to try and summit the tallest mountain in Antarctica. It's going to get pretty dramatic, I tell you. You definitely don't want to miss this adventure. Keep exploring and I'll see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.